Hello and welcome to the first episode or the second episode. I'm sorry of that's my story. On this podcast, we talk about individuals' life stories. Not everyone's story plays out the same, and I've always been fascinated to hear life stories. Uh, these are the stories that shape us as human beings and make us individuals. And I would like to hear about the moments in life that made you you. Alrighty. So what's up, Manny? Yo, what's going on? All right. So uh, just <laughs> it's kind of funny because like Manny and I know each other so well. We've what, we've known each other for so long. It's uh, about what, 16 years now. I think 16 years. So let's, let's I guess let's go with the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, why don't you introduce yourself, Manny? Uh, well, my name is Manny. I uh, work at UPS. I got two kids. Um, I've known George for so long. We were roommates with each other and, uh, you know, right now just living day to day with this whole thing going on. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. The, the pandemic is definitely, uh, not something that, uh, we're still used to, even yeah. though it's been over a year. Um, oh, happy Cinco de Mayo, by the way. I know. Right. Uh, yeah. Cinco de Trinco. Cinco de Trinco. <laughs> Uh, by the time this episode comes out, it'll be, uh, you know, it'll be past Cinco de Mayo, but it's Cinco de Mayo for me and you right now. Yes. Um, <laughs> so if you guys, if you guys missed that episode of uh, the Speakeasy Gentleman, go back and watch that because we have a special Cinco de Drinco episode. Sweet. So check that out. Um, so let's get into uh, some information just about so we can get to, so I guess the, the listeners can get to know you a little bit better, Manny. Um so let's talk about where you are currently living. Uh, right now, I am currently <clears throat> living in Cyprus. Um, uh, recently went through a separation and, um, you know, just living with some friends right now until I can save enough to get my own place. But, uh, you know, it, it's not too bad. The kids are okay. I'm okay. We're doing, we're doing good and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah. Well, that's good. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your backstory? Let's talk about where you grew up when you oh, were a child. Okay. Uh, well, I was actually born here in the States in Santa Ana. Um, I was taken to Mexico for a little bit. Uh, grew up for a couple years out there and then... Uh, Came back down here, started living in Santa Ana again with uh, the rest of the family. Um, Till I was about 10 years old, then we moved to Tustin, and I kind of grew up out there. You know, just went to junior high, high school out there, made a bunch of friends, did a lot of dumb stuff. And uh, yeah, you know, just uh, met some people, went all the way... <laughs> Like I met you, you know, and then, you know, I moved out from my place and, you know, I, I bounced around a little bit here and there from different place to different place. But, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's touch back on, uh, let's touch back on Mexico. I don't know how many of us listeners have been to Mexico. I've never, I've never been out of the country. So I'd never been to like Mexico or Canada or <laughs> China, Japan, nowhere. Uh, my life is a little boring that way. <laughs> but uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Mexico, what it's like to actually live there as opposed to just visiting it as a, you know, like a vacation. Yeah, uh, very, very different depending on where you're at in Mexico. So I'm actually, my family is from a little place called uh, Torreon, uh, Coahuila, and uh, the population's not very big. Not very big. Um, they still had like mud or clay houses. Oh shit! Uh, yeah, serious. Uh, <laughs> the backyard led up to like a mountain, and we have like bobcats and cougars in the backyard. Mm. Big old scorpions and stuff like that. But I mean, it was a population of like maybe like a thousand people, you know. So it's not. It wasn't very big or anything. Dirt roads. Yeah, it's a small town, so basically, it's like everybody knows town. each other. Yeah, 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 definitely small town. You know, we all pretty much helped each other out with everything that was out there. 
um, you know, trying to hunt for like rabbits and whatever else we can get to eat and all that kind of stuff. I feel like uh, be, living in a small community definitely has its benefits because you grow up knowing uh, everybody in like your town or village or whatever, and everyone's very well connected, very uh, not really culty, but kind of like uh, everyone's just brought together because you guys have to fight all the basically the natural elements and whatnot. So, yeah, um, one of the things that sucks out there is uh, the rain. The, oh my god, the rain. It rains so much and so hard. Uh, I actually remember when they, so pretty much almost everybody in the town, all the guys at least, they had to build a, like a dam, not a dam, but like a, like a river passing or a stream or whatever. Mm -hmm. So where all the water can collect and just go out of town because the town would flood. Oh, so they made like a, like a trench, like a ditch. Yeah, like a trench. Yeah. 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 Which all of our houses, um, we had, we made ourselves like a little bridge to go out of that trench because it would just flood right in front of our uh, uh, our homes. So we we everybody got not not me particularly, but you know everybody got together and everybody was building this freaking trench for I don't know how long, but they had to make it deep. They had to make it super long because it would literally flood flood the houses for. It, it it was pretty bad for a little while, but I mean they they made use of what they did and uh, yeah the times out there it's it was really hard compared to what we we're living here, but they they're they're happy all the time you know it's just how their life is it's they they don't understand what it is over here you know well because they don't have to deal with all the bullshit that we have to deal with like their life yeah. is, their life is simple so the the simple life is like you have like 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 real life struggles to get the you literally have to worry about famine you have to worry about wildlife you have to worry about nature as to here people have to worry about what they say because you could hurt someone's feelings and get canceled so it's two entirely different like <laughs> situations serious so. serious i actually remember a time when i was out there and um I was just leaning up against the the little wall right there next to uh, uh, the front patio or whatever you want to call it, and uh, my uncle comes at me real quick with a shovel. I thought he was gonna knock me out or something. Little did I know there was like a big old black scorpion behind me, nice. <laughs> about to come at me, and he just smashed the damn thing. And he tells me, you know, tonto, and I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, I didn't know that was back there. So like you got to be more careful, and I'm like, yeah, I, I should be out here. <laughs> yeah. So you, you said you come into uh, contact with the like a lot of wildlife. Um, any close calls with wildlife? Yes. Um, I, I, not me particularly, but my cousins. When we were in the backyard with my cousins. Um, cause we have to pick out the straws for whatever grandma just wanted the straws out of the back or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's probably like to feed the animals or something like that. But, um, there's, um, like a bobcat that's coming down the mountain. Cause like I said, we live behind like a mountain or whatever. And that dude's coming quick. And my cousin tells me, look, you need to go back into the house, you know? <laughs> so I'm running back into the house, but my my cousin stayed there. My cousin is staying right there because apparently um, yeah, bobcat attacks is pretty common out there. So they figure out how to deal with it or whatever. And uh -huh. and it, he was staying his ground and everything like that. He actually did get clipped from the cat, um, uh, like on his leg or something like that. I, I can't remember too much. Again, I was super young. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, and um, yeah, but he he definitely ripped a hole in that that cat's side. Uh, he I don't know if he had like a pocket knife or a handmade knife or whatever, but uh, that cat came down and he was able to get him like like across the chest or something, and and the bobcat was, I guess, dinner. <laughs> bobcat for dinner. Wonder what that's I, like. I, I, you know, I'm, I don't ask questions and I can't remember too much, but it is what it is. I, that is, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. 
you know, and like was dinner. exactly when you're out there, you know, you, you, like you're farming the chickens to have chicken and you're trying to collect rabbits and make sure that they eat and they breed so you can have rabbit. You know what I mean? It's it's not so much that you can just go to a store or anything out there to like a grocery store or whatever. You you do what you can to get feed for whatever animals you have and do whatever you got to do. But but that yeah, that was that's how life was out there, you know, for a little while. Yeah, it's a little it's a little bit different out there. It's like uh, fight or flight, right? So yeah, and this is my memory from when I went back there to visit when I was like. 12 or 13 because remember i was i was only there for like a few years like three or four years you know what i mean and because i i was super young so when we went back to visit this was me, me remembering at that time what, what what they were doing so everything right there was just it was it was it was very weird uh going back to seeing where you're, you're where you're coming from here in the states, and then going back to Mexico and seeing all that kind of stuff right there, it, it was it's different. Yeah, I'm sure it's a, I'm sure it's different. It's There's no so way. different. Yeah. <laughs> um. Jesus. All right. Well, we got to hear a little bit about like uh like where you grew up and what life was like kind of in Mexico. That's very cool. Um, yeah. Let's talk about like uh. Well, I guess you kind of brought up food. Let's talk about your favorite food. Oh man, my favorite food. Wow. Um You know what? I love ramen. I I love ramen. I love sushi. Like that's kind of like my jam right there too. I I I, I I just I I could eat ramen all the time. I it's extremely bad for you. I know it can be if you ate it so much, but I, I love going to different places and trying uh, different uh, ramens and just sushi, fish in general. I just I like seafood a lot. I I do like seafood a lot. So I mean, but yeah, that that ramen man. Uh, yeah, that, that 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 I can go for like. Almost all the time, you know okay. what I mean. We actually, you know, you and me, we have a spot Shinsengumi that we go to. Uh, it's, it's my favorite type of. It's my favorite type of ramen that I've tried thus far. I've had quite a, diff, a few different types. Um, yeah. So Shinsengumi sells a Hakata style ramen. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a, it's not for everyone because it's like a, it's got like an oily soup base and. Yeah. Uh, God, but it's fucking it's so incredible. It's hard it's to it's hard so to good. it's hard to describe the flavor. Um and if you ask them, they'll refill your noodles, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so that's like one of the benefits of going to that particular spot is um they have like a, a noodle refill for like a dollar yeah. or something or something. So it's exactly. Like, you're like, what? I could have more noodles, and then you get like add more <laughs> soup base. It's like this is like ridiculous. are you kidding me? Yes, yeah. I want more noodles. <laughs> let's let's go. Yeah. So yeah, ramen ramen is spectacular. There's like so many different kinds of ramen. I'm sure some of the listeners are like I mean like top ramen. Like no, we're talking about like authentic, yeah, Japan, authentic about... Japanese ramen. Um, <laughs> I've gone. I've had I've, love had ramen. I've had ramen from like Kopan, Gomen. I've been to uh, uh, Mitsuwa to have ramen. I've I've gone to a lot of places to eat ramen and. Uh, Shinsengumi, man, I just uh, I love that place. That place is probably one of my favorite places to go and get ramen. Yeah, I love that place. Um, it's just that style, that style. And I like when I go to Japan, I want to go to the the Hakata Station and have the actual Hakata style ramen there. Oh man, I wish that's like that's one of my places on my bucket list. I want to go visit Japan just because, man, it's. I, yeah, I, I, I gotta I'm, go. I know. I'm. I really like. Really want to. I go. kind of regret not going earlier in life. You know, when it was just like me being single and just. I don't know why it never occurred to me to just get a passport. It's not like it's hard to get a passport. You just go like to the post well, office and you're like, at I need a passport. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, okay, stand up against that wall. We'll take your picture. And then, and then three weeks later, you get your passport. Like I don't understand why I never did that. You know? No, well, I mean, at the same time, we were kind of like knuckleheads when we were younger. You know what I mean? Knuckleheads. So, 
knuckleheads. We were kind of like knuckleheads. So, yeah, a little bit, you know, it's, yeah. we, we so, never, we never looked past the, what we wanted to do. We were just like in the now moment kind of ordeal. We did a lot of stuff in the now moment. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. It's like we should have yeah, like, yeah, planned, we should have planned things a little bit better. We, we could have planned a lot of things a lot better and taken more trips when we were younger. For sure. We probably could have, you know what I mean? So. I mean, we, we, but like I said, we weren't thinking about that kind of stuff. We were just, you know, we were just <laughs> dumb, yeah. you know. We didn't think to the future of what we can do. We were just, we were just happy with what we were, we were, we had, and what we were doing. We, we didn't look outside of it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> we we're dumb. So let's yeah. talk about uh, music, Manny. Favorite type of music? Who favorite type of music? Um, I actually like uh, '90s hip hop and R&B. I, I love '90s hip hop, '90s hip hop and R&B. So you like listening to Casey and JoJo and shit? What's wrong with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, yeah, dude. I uh, growing up. My dad was actually a uh, a b boy, so he was a break dancer, and uh, he taught me how to break dance at a young age too. Um, it was it was fun. I like doing it. We actually had a father son uh, dance competition at his work, uh, TDK, which no longer exists. Um, but um, yeah, you know, and we grew up listening to nineties hip-hop kind of weird you know like just pop music or whatever and we used to get down with it and everything like that and i kind of just grew up just listening to that kind of stuff and uh <laughs> it's considered oldies now uh yeah it's considered oldies now yeah it's considered oldies now oh jesus christ but uh yeah man i i used to be all about that noise it was it was I used to get, I used to groove down with that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm, uh, '90s hip hop and R and B's, it's my jam. Nice. It's good. It's a good choice of music. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about uh, pets. Do you have any pets growing up? I did. I actually had a German Shepherd growing up. Uh, so. This dog was originally my sister's. My uh, my dad got it. No, was it my dad? Yeah, my dad got it for my sister when she was born. So the idea was for her to grow up with the dog. But um, my sister wanted nothing to do with the dog. So nice. Uh, I grew attached to the dog. The dog's name was Evil, and um, e not evil, evil. So oh, it's like because that's, e that's so it's much. Kind, it's kind of like E V and O, evil. Evo. 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 Yeah. Yes. So, okay. um, yeah, I grew really attached to the dog. The dog was my, pretty much my best friend and everything. And uh, I would play with the dog every day. That dog was one of the best things at that time in my life uh, that I could have. Um, my dad, my dad hated that dog. My dad, <laughs> I don't know why he got the dog in the first place, but my dad hated that dog. He wanted to get rid of that dog. It dad wasn't kick, it, dad it, kick him? my dad. My dad didn't even want to feed him. <laughs> he just did not like the dog for nothing. He, you know what? He just thought it was a waste of space because my sister didn't like it. He thought, you know, it would have been something for him. And I, I, I don't know. He just, he just did not like the dog. I guess he's like the dog was lazy or some bullshit like that, or I don't know. Nice, no, but it wasn't. Over. He's like, he's like, fuck it, I'm over it. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. But it wasn't until one night, um, we were at my grandma's house in Santa Ana that uh, my dad just totally just changed his mind about this dog, wasn't going to get rid of this dog. So, there, our house was being burglarized. Um, our house was broken into uh, my dad was the first one up to go see what was going down 
And this guy, uh, my dad was struggling with, he was going to stab my dad. He was literally going to stab my dad. And uh, my dog, okay, literally ran and broke through the window to bite this dude in the arm, uh, which he was holding the knife in. Like, no joke. Like, this is, like, serious. This is exactly what happened. He he ran and broke through the window and bit this dude's freaking arm. And my dad was able to ru- rus- rustle this guy and everything and just, like, get the knife. And the dog wouldn't let him go for anything. And then he kicked my dog. And then he tried to book it. And then my dog was going to chase after him. But my dad told him to stop and stay and everything like that. So the dog didn't go after him. He just stayed. He was a really good dog, very well behaved. And ever since then, my dad, my dad will give him a little extra food for like off his own <laughs> plate or whatever. He loved the dog, even though he did not want to have the dog, or anything like that. He just, he, the dog saved his life and he, he just was so damn thankful. And yeah, that, that, that dog was the best thing for him. Nice. Dog oh, yeah. saved his life, and like now he repays him with scraps. Exactly. You know? Way to go. <laughs> and my dad wouldn't buy like cheap ass kibble either. Like he'd get him like really good stuff, or sometimes he'll like, if he can't finish his plate, he'll give him his plate or whatever. Nice. But uh, yeah, so he, after that, it was, he, he loved that dog. So thankful for the dog. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about uh, your favorite, your favorite alcoholic beverage. Ooh, you had to go there, huh? Yes, yeah. you had to go there. Oh boy. Okay. My favorite alcohol beverage. Um. Wow, that's kind of hard. Just because I like so many different things, I. I like beer a lot, and you introduced me to this beer called Pliny, which is so good. I, I I've never had it before, and the other day I'm just like, wow, that is really good beer. Um, yeah. Be- before, yeah, it, before you know, my thing was like the Delirium, you know, I and that was my kind of like my thing. But that Pliny, as far as beer goes, uh, that, that is that is really good beer. That is really good beer. I am definitely, that's probably the, my top as far as beer goes. But um, I like whiskey a lot. Jameson used to be my thing, but it just doesn't taste the same for me anymore. You know, but I can walk around with a Jack Daniels bottle all day. That's for sure. But Jack, Jack, Jack and Coke is my thing. Jack, I love Jack and Coke. Jack and Coke is like my go-to Whenever I'm going to have something, for sure, it's very simple. It's just, you know, two part drink, very easy to make. Yeah, classic. You know, got to get flavor to it. Although the other day I couldn't stop thinking of that damn freaking uh, Midori sour you made me, oh, and good, uh, right? <laughs> it was so delicious. Good, right? I looked at it kind of funny. It 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 just looked very weird to me. Well, because you know, it's because it's green. So, <laughs> it's. Yeah. it's it's so green, like it almost looks like slime or something, but uh, it was so good. It was so good. I even called you the next day. Hey, what are the ingredients in that so I can make it myself? It's a four-part <laughs> drink. It's not hard yeah. to make. Ah, it was just so damn good. I uh, I like that bubbly kind of sour tartness to it. It was it was, it was was really good. I, I enjoyed that drink. I, don't, I might have to change my drink because that was, uh, that was pretty good. Yeah, there's uh, a lot. There's a lot of good drinks out there, and uh, oh, there's so much. And uh, I've been trying to like, you know, like make drinks, uh, just like make different cocktails. I know like a lot of people don't like those like flavored, like sweet or those type of drinks, but you know what? I, I fucking enjoy them. I don't need to. Uh, I don't need to be like, knocked off my ass every single time I take a sip. You know, like something's like incredibly strong. Like yeah. when I was twenty. You know, I just like I, I enjoy. <laughs> <was> funny. <laughs> I, I enjoy drinking drinks for the flavor. You know, um, not to yeah. say that like, not to say that there isn't any good tasting whiskey because I've had some great t- 
tasting whiskey where you could have it neat and it's just smooth as balls. Yeah. 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 No, that's definitely true. Um, you missed out though. You left and we forgot to do uh, sake. So the next time you're here, well, oh, I have a bottle of. Uh, I I completely forgot that you uh, you said that you did have the sake there. I was it's really good. I wouldn't that. say it's like it's not a and I, it's not a cheap <laughs> bottle and it's all it's not expensive. It's like it's a mid range bottle. I think it was like fifty bucks, but like yeah, it's super smooth, chilled, and it's it's supposed to be served chilled. Um, because like well, when you go and you purchase, you gotta look at the. Well, at least when I go, like I usually buy my sake from Mitsuo just because I'm there, and they have a, a very big selection of just sake, and like they'll yeah. have, they'll have notes, on some of the sake there that you go to buy, and they'll tell you what it pairs well with. They'll tell you whether or not it is uh, best served chilled or cold or chilled or hot. Yeah. So. Uh, that one was specifically cold, and I was like, "That'd be nice," because we bought that bottle of sake for like a shabu shabu night. Yeah, and, it, and I was like, ah, "It'd be nice to offset the shabu shabu with something cold," you know, like so chilled sake was perfect, and it it's so <coughs> smooth. Like it's one of the smoothest sakes I've ever had in my life. Really? Yeah, it just goes down. It's very flavorful. Like it's 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 like robust in a weird way, but like smooth. So. Yeah, the only sake I've ever really had is like you always had to like warm up. I've never had sake where you, it was like on like chilled or anything like that. Yeah, I, it, I'm, the, uh, everywhere I went, they always warmed up your sake, and that's how you drank it. And I'm just like, man, it's very traditional. <laughs> it's very traditional to warm it up. Yeah, but chilled sake is like uh, it's pretty damn good. Yeah, I gotta I try that. I next think it's because like uh, here in America, we like chilled drinks very much, and I think they adapt they adopted that. And they're like, you know what? We're gonna serve this shit chill. Then we'll create like a a, <laughs> a, a version of sake that's gonna be taste well <laughs> chilled. You know? Yeah. Japan, they don't have whiskey on the rock. They have sake on the rock. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so um, we've, we've gone over quite a few minor things, but oddly enough, that that's already eaten up a lot of time. So let's talk about. Uh, um, let's talk about your relationship with your parents. Um, what relationship? Um, We're moving on. <laughs> there, um, okay. So I, I do speak to my mom and dad occasionally. Um, my relationship with my folks is, um, it's a very weird situation, um, things happened where I hated my dad for a while. Things happened where I hated my mom for a while. Um, it's just the, the way they raised me to be, you know, because I was a very, I was a good kid, you know, and I was very sheltered and everything like that. But, you know, growing, growing up and then seeing them not turning out to be the way they're telling me to be. It's so hypocritical that I don't understand why you can't do the same thing. And I just had a hard time dealing with it from my folks. You know, my my dad messed up on my mom. Uh, I had to hear it through a friend and I hated my mm -hmm. dad for it for a while. My mom never wanted anything more than to be just a mom. But she's always pushing us to get an education and doing stuff like that. And she's been a lunch lady for, she's still a lunch lady since we were in elementary school. Um, she wanted, she wanted never, she didn't want anything more than just to be a mom. And I'm just like, you know, <laughs> what if I just want to be a dad? What if my sister wanted to be just a mom, but you keep pushing us to want to be something else, you know, it's like. I understand don't mess up like you did or anything like that, but you still had time when all that kind of happened to figure out what you wanted to do. People go back to school at whatever age to figure out something, you know? Yeah. But you I never mean, know you never know what might happen in the future. You could end up happily after after, you could not. But the thing is to have something to fall back on in case something happens and it's just, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of things that are going on between me and my mom and me and my dad. And uh, it's, 
I, I I do put a little bit of an effort to try to talk to them, but every time I talk to them, it just it kind of upsets me a little bit. And it's not that they bring up a certain conversation or anything like that. It's just when I see them, it it, it breaks my heart. Not not every family is meant to be with each other, you know. But at least try to figure something out for the kids. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And when you have to see your mom and your dad still living under the same roof, uh, roof, but your mom stays in the room because your dad's in the living room and you're separated like that for so many years, it's like, serious? You know what I mean? My dad lived on a futon for I don't know how many years in the living room and my mom never left her bedroom unless my dad was already out the house. And she had to make sure that she was back in the house before my dad ever got home because she doesn't want to see my dad. And she stays in the room, you know? And I'm like, what kind of life is that? You know, it's just, it just sucks. And it hurts to see, you know, that kind of stuff happen. Yeah. So was that like, uh, were they separated, but just living together then? So they were separated, but they were still living under the same roof. Okay, so that makes um, a little more sense there. Yeah, so they were separated but still under the same roof. But, you know, it's like my my mom never left her cave for anything. And if she ever needed anything, she called one of us into the room, you know. And my, my dad was always in the living room and, like, they are hardly ever made eye contact with each other. They hardly ever talked with each other. And, you know, it's just that's how it's always been, you know, and it's, it's, it's just, it was one of those things that broke my heart and it's, it, it's just hard to see them, you know, mm-hmm. without that kind of stuff popping yeah. into my head. Yeah. It brings up too much, uh, too many emotions from the past and like, yeah, they never, they never got to settle anything. And yeah. Oh, it almost seems like it was like a broken home, you know? Um, but I mean, that didn't really affect. Uh, that didn't really affect the way that they felt for each of the, you know, you guys, right? The kids. No, no, no. My 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 family loved us, you know, so much. Um, you know, it, it never affected the way they loved us or anything like that, or you know, or the the way they thought about us and what they wanted for us. It didn't do anything to that, you know. And my sister and my brother. You know, they, they've come to terms and they've realized, you know, they can't let it bother them, but I'm very different. And I let a lot of things kind of like stew a little bit. I let things bother me and I have a hard time dealing with that kind of stuff. And, Mm -hmm. uh, but. Well, you have to take into account that you're the oldest, right? Yes. So being the oldest you got to see that stuff when they when they were ignorant to it and you got to grow up with it a lot longer than they did so those things are those feelings are gonna they're gonna linger and fester and just build up and all you're gonna feel is resentment i know because i kind of have like a a similar situation so i understand the feeling you know yeah no yeah for sure i get you yeah it's rough Um, but you know what can you do yeah. Well, let's keep that relationship a train of going. Let's talk about just your relationships in general. Are there any uh, spicy ones, I guess? Spicy relationships. Mm. Well, I share a room with a burly man named Sergio. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know and, what? Uh, thank you for tuning in, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's actually pretty cool. Um my buddy Sergio, we, uh, cause like I've said, I'm, I'm basically sharing this room and I've been hanging out with him a lot. I don't have any real relationships right now. Like the closest relationships I have are just my friends in general. Like, well, I mean, we're not talking about current relationships. We're talking about just relationships in general. Oh, like, just yeah. relationships in general. Yeah. Any Oof. that come to mind that were like memorable or maybe um, something, something that was like, a thing from your past that you kind of wish you never let go or anything. You know what? I did have a few, like I had two relationships that I had a hard time letting go. 
for the longest time, I was in love with these people, and uh, it was almost kind of like a white rhino situation, but um, it took a long time to let that go. Uh, after I met Angela, you know, it was, I still had those kinds of feelings, and it wasn't until later on in my relationship with her where I was able to actually let go of, you know, those relationships, and I just, my main focus was Angela, you know, and that's that's probably one of the relationships that uh you know that I I should have been paying more attention to um okay. definitely could have def could have definitely fixed that a lot more uh but I mean you know everybody has you know problems in the relationship you know and you got to figure it out and stuff like that I definitely have you know, stuff in the back of my mind with my relationship with uh, Angela and stuff like that. And it was hard to, it's still kind of hard to, to get over with like that, you know, because, you know, something traumatic happened. So, mm -hmm. it, it, and it's none of her fault and everything like that. And, you know, I love that girl to death. You know, I still do, but, you know, right now we're still real good friends. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're talking about trauma. Mm -hmm. um, other than the obvious, has there, has there been any other trauma? Um, I mean, I've I've had quite a few injuries in my life where, you know, it, it actually affected a little bit of, about me. Um, one of them was completely blowing out my right knee. That kind of screwed me up a little bit uh, when I was playing college soccer and uh, kind of missed my shot at some things growing up, which I shouldn't have played outside of college, but I ended up doing it anyway. But you know, the way I look at it is if that didn't happen, I wouldn't be working where I'm working and I wouldn't have met, you know, the people that are in my life right now. I, I probably wouldn't even have met you. Probably not. Yeah, you know, yeah, so probably not. everything happens for a reason. And, you know, I'm, I'm actually very thankful for the people that are in my life, you know, and stuff like that. I'm, I, I, to me, everything happens for a reason. And, uh, that was one of those things where, you know, it, it happened and I got some amazing people in return and I'm actually thankful for that. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. You want to talk about just something random? You know what? Let's, um, cause I, I, we kind of covered a lot of the stuff that, uh, we kind of covered a lot of the stuff that I was going to ask you already, like in these stories. So <laughs> is there, is there any specific story you would like to just share that you think might have been um, a point that uh, made you you? Yes. There... Okay, perfect. There is a point that made me me. And, <laughs> and that is you, sir. Um, so... When I was working at UPS, um, I was still living with my folks, you know what I mean? I not once ever thought about moving out of my house, you know, not once, never, never thought the idea of moving out at all. I thought I was going to be there till, I don't know, <laughs> my late thirties or something like that. But it wasn't until you gave me an opportunity to come be a roommate with you and Craig and John and Joey. And um, and I don't know what, you know, got in my head to say, yeah, you know what? I want to do that, you know, because uh, it was it was a scary moment in my life. You know, that was the first time I ever moved out, first yeah. time I ever moved out. And uh, I had I had to give it a shot. You know, if I hadn't had you come towards me and give me a shot to be your guys roommate. I, I don't know if I would have ever left the house. Um, 
one of the things that made me me today, you know, as far as a person and my personality and uh, er er everything that's going on with my life, you know, was the fact that I got to live uh, a different life, you know, with you as my roommate and Craig and Joey and John. And you guys introduced me into a, a, a lot of things because I don't know if you remember or not, but I was I was a very sheltered kid. I, I I'm my mom was very strict with a lot of very freaking strict. things. Yeah. Very strict. My mom was very strict with a lot that I did. And she she, you know, just she held me she held me back a little. She held me under the covers, you know, she didn't ever want to let me go, but I felt like this is something I needed to do, needed to go out there, experience my own, you know, try to see if I can do it myself, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm definitely grateful for the opportunity to be, you know, have been your roommate and then turn out to be the kind of person that I am today. You know, you are definitely one of the reasons why, who I am, why, why I am right now, you know? That's awesome, man. Thank you. It's nice to hear. It's nice to yeah. hear that, that uh, even I can change somebody's life. <laughs> oh, you you can definitely change people's life. You know what I mean? Definitely. That's awesome. Thank you. Also, thank you for being on, Manny. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Anytime. Anytime. Yeah. And uh, I do apologize to everybody for this show being so, uh, I guess, not a super professional show, but then I mean, that's <laughs> kind of what this that's kind of what this is. This is kind of like a little bit of a, a realistic thing. We're just sitting here talking, having a small conversation. I understand some of it is like a little scripted and just doesn't seem real. But like the, the when we get into the, the nitty gritty of the stories, like it, this is all real, you know. And yeah, I really enjoy this. This is this is pretty this is pretty phenomenal. And you know, obviously, you and I grew up well basically grew up together I know yeah. each other for 16 years so i mean we have a history there and, and yeah 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 you know so that's and, pretty awesome yeah and everything i'm saying it's the le totally legit everything to the t you know like this yeah. was this was my life growing up you know and this is this is this is awesome yeah this is pretty cool all right well thank you guys for watching everybody uh please uh want uh please like comment and subscribe uh i'm george lugo and i'm manny rivera and that's my story Bye bye